This was a, a funny story to read this morning because it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was on Discussing Film, and it basically details this ridiculous freakout that Jake Gyllenhaal had that was so bad and erratic yeah. that it caused this entire movie production to get closed. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal was intended to star in an indie film called Suddenly with a $30 million budget. And due to his erratic behavior, they had to suspend the production entirely. So let's list this off. He stripped to his underwear and dove into the freezing ocean saying, when I see the sea, I swim in the sea. He demanded that they rewrite the script to his tastes. And he also read the script in a mocking French accent like Pepe <laughs> Le Pew. And he also demanded that the people building the set sleep in their cars to avoid spreading COVID. That's the worst of it. The film was shot in French with French actors, uh, originally supposed to be shot in 2021, in English with Jake Gyllenhaal and Vanessa Kirby starring in it. And Margot Robbie even was uh, eyed to star in the project. So. People found this from a French publication talking about it. They like published a candid photo of Jake Gyllenhaal walking into the freezing cold ocean in his underwear and everything. So there's proof. So <laughs> the film collapsed mainly due to a paranoid, capricious and power hungry Gyllenhaal, who was not just the lead actor, but also a producer on the film. And uh, I guess the fact that he was a producer gave him the power to make demands about the script and everything, yeah. but still, it seems is, out of line. But it is like very classic Hollywood. Like yeah. look at this overbearing, self-centered actor making unreasonable <laughs> demands and acting like a diva. Yeah, yeah. it's very old school Hollywood. Yeah. He arrived in Iceland and that's when I things uh, began to go awry. Uh, here's some of his erratic behavior. He demanded that the script be rewritten to a curious moment in which he stripped down to his underwear and jumped into the freezing cold sea in front of the whole crew. <laughs> and then uh, that's when he screamed uh, in the middle of the water, when I see the sea, I swim in the sea. And he also specified what color his car should be while he was in Iceland. It shouldn't be red or white specifically. Not sure why that was important. Gyllenhaal and Vanessa Kirby read the script aloud in mocking French accents like Pepe Le Pew, and Gyllenhaal argued that the script should be rewritten to make his character an ex-soldier. Quote, for a scene on a boat, Jake Gyllenhaal sells us the idea that he slaps a fish. Just slaps a fish. Wow. That's really important <laughs> to him. Great idea. He uh, continued making demands about changing the script, saying the production set builders had to sleep in their cars in order to prevent the spread of COVID. And I've talked a lot about this, how like it seems like COVID and the lockdowns really broke some people's brains beyond repair. Mm -hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal being no exception to that rule. Did you, does anybody like, oh, so I was out last night and I was, I, I was at dinner and there was like a waitress. She wasn't even like at our table, but she had like a mask on and I just felt bad for her. Like, I feel bad that well, she's still living in... Well, it's not her boss who's making her do no. it. It's her own choice That's what I'm at saying, that point. Else, like, I'm, not, I, I'm not mad at this lady. Yeah. I'm not even judging her because, like, she doesn't... Maybe doesn't have the other the information that other people have. I just feel bad that somebody, like, is just still like, are that you so afraid okay? of illness? Which is just a part of life. Yeah. yeah. Like, that, just, that just made me sad. Like, yeah. I don't feel animosity towards that person. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She's not I being agree. rude to me. She's not telling me that I need to act or wear something that I don't want to. She's doing it of her own volition and that almost makes it more sad to me. I, I wonder I sometimes know. too is if it's people who are sick and just don't want to get other people well, sick. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I mean that's that's you know? usually the the when I see it in public, I'm like, okay, they might have a compromised immune system. Mm -hmm. Fine. Like I get that. And that yeah. that could be what it is, but I just like if it's not um, I just I feel bad for them. Oh yeah, that absolutely. They, that they live in that much fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I I only had one friend who was like that, yeah. I think. She like wanted me to wear a mask while I was in her house because she had a grandparent at, okay. at her house. But then once we left, she also expected me to still wear the mask like as we were outside and everything. And Jake Gyllenhaal's like, no, go sleep in your car. Yeah, and then she just like ghosted me after. I haven't heard from her since. Mm -hmm. Um, so the producer, Elaine Atal, dug his heels in he refused to change the script to Jake Gyllenhaal's demands. And that's when the project fell apart. He said, I'm going to talk to Jake and we agree that there is no point in persisting. Our visions diverge too much. 
And after the project came to an end, Vanessa Kirby reportedly tried to buy the script so that she could attempt to make it with Jake Gyllenhaal on their own, but they refused the offer. Must have not been a good enough offer. Um, but yeah, it sounds like this guy uh, needs some help from it, Elmo. It's just funny because I, I recently I, he I needs did to get watch... a hold of his emotional <laughs> well being. He was in a he was in a movie called The Covenant with that was made by Guy Ritchie. It came out last year where uh, he's carried across the desert in I don't remember if it's Iraq or Afghanistan um, uh, after his unit comes under attack. And I just imagine like imagine you're, like you're making this movie about this incredible because I believe I believe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was based on a true story. I could be wrong about that. But imagine like looking at this life that somebody else what this person went through and being like this person lived this crazy life went through all of this uh, hardship and he's just over here like go sleep in your car because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, that's really kind of classist, elitist. I saw someone say like they thought maybe he was trying to sabotage the movie because the script wasn't what he wanted it to be maybe. and he wanted to get fired. Uh, I feel like maybe Devious. If, yeah, there's other ways to go about doing that probably, especially if you're Jake Gyllenhaal. Um does he have a history of being like either like a diva or too in character? I don't know. Like I I he like he's he's got such a long uh, filmography like it's hard to imagine that I mean granted I believe his dad was he's like a legacy mm. his dad was in the industry obviously everyone knows his sister is in the industry as well right. Maggie a Jordan legacy Hall. but not a nepo baby I mean that's look, since that's, he's made that's a good. name for he's himself he's the bigger name than his dad like, we got a $20 from 420 funny I just got to the Shatner bit Trek paid homage to Majel Barrett who was in the original series by using her voice as the computer in Voyager after she died. Not AI, I know, but Trek has a precedent. Love you guys, great show. Thank you. So I guess that, I, I don't know, they could make Captain Kirk's voice into a computer yeah, voice. They could do that. That makes that actually makes perfect sense for a lot of it. Like what did they do in, um, uh, it's kind of like when they changed the voice for uh, like Tony, like in Tony Stark for in Iron Man. So they could do that. Uh, another one in the comments said, I wonder if it's a situation he accidentally found himself in, like Dakota Johnson with Madam Webb, where he was sold on an idea that wasn't what was happening, so he decided to do everything he could to get fired from the movie. Although since he was a producer, he couldn't have gotten fired. Um, yeah, they're saying Dakota Johnson because she allegedly was sold on doing Madam Webb because her agent told her this was in the MCU and it's actually owned by Sony. Oh, well. um, but now it's too late. I mean, she's going to get her bag at the end of the day. Doesn't they'll matter. Make, they'll make their money either way. Yeah. Uh, and also someone said, how is this not a disbussing film? Oh, I, dude, I saw a great one on... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I caught myself. I almost reposted one. Um, really? <laughs> there, yeah, there was like, it was like Ben Affleck removed from Gone Boy, which is a direct sequel to Gone Girl. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, they need to make a yeah. Gone Boy. And that I, would I, had be good. To, I had to double check. I'm like, nope, disbussing film. I'm one of the Damn. proud disbussies. I've actually <laughs> sent you yeah. posts from them like on accident before, for yeah. sure. Well, when it's done well, you don't know. Well, they made fun of this story and they posted their own take on it. An indie movie suddenly fell apart after Jake Gyllenhaal showed erratic behavior, including caring too much, trying too hard, mm -hmm. yearning for the love of others, and asking the boom mic operator for Megan Thee Stallion's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> the last one I would believe. Yes. Well, how does the boom operator have Megan Thee Stallion's phone number? That's the real question. This is another one of Taylor Swift's exes, I must yeah. mention. Who hasn't she oh, dated wow. at this point? Yeah. Yeah. That's really what it is. Like she's dated every Maybe Hollywood. she's not the crazy one. <laughs> I'm I'm not maybe she's dated so problem. many crazies that Yeah, I mean if crazy. you're like attracted to crazies, now, that's your problem. No, I think this is a personal flaw and uh, like like you can only have so many bad ones in a row. <laughs> like imagine being her best friend for like fifteen like seventeen boyfriends <laughs> later, they're like, Yeah, he's the problem. Yeah, he's the problem. And then just every time she's like, I broke up with someone, they go <clears throat> Yes, he is the problem. And they just have to get used to saying that over and over again. Hey, anything again. to be Taylor Swift's best friend, I guess. Yeah, I, I To maintain I guess. that position. Look, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's got, Road, uh, he's got Roadhouse coming out soon on Amazon Prime. Um, people were asking what his best role is. I would say of the ones that I've seen, Zodiac in 2007 mm -hmm. would be my personal favorite. Um, 
I'm looking at the original article about this from the French publication, and I just like translated it with Google Translate into broken English. And it says that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal exploded with rage when he learned that the builders of the set arrived the next day from a hotel. Terrified by COVID, Jake Gyllenhaal states that they must sleep in their cars. He screams and clutches to the fact that he doesn't want decor. He demands to see plans of the constructions and treats everyone as incompetent and finally declares that if it's like that, then he's leaving the project and exhausted by days of negotiations, they said goodbye. He could have offered to pay for them to sleep somewhere separately. Yeah. COVID definitely broke a lot of people's brains. Also, at that yeah. time, there was uh, large financial ramifications if somebody got COVID and production had to shut down. So it might not even necessarily be the type of thing where you're physically scared uh, of what's going to happen to you with your health. It's about mm -hmm. what if someone else gets it and they force us to shut down and it costs us a fortune. Do they have those regulations anymore, though? No, no. But they this was even... from uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is from like what last year, two years ago. Yeah, from a couple of years ago, so 2021, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, and it's coming they out were still, now. Yeah, they were yeah. still in the, gotcha. in the thick of it. And, okay, I'm surprised that the U.S. publications didn't pick up on this. So you know how it came out that Kanye was, like, playing porn videos in business meetings yep. with Adidas and, and Ew, stuff like what? that? Like, he was literally showing them pornography videos to, like, spark their creativity. Huh, that, I did not hear about that. That actually <laughs> happened. So here is what Jake Gyllenhaal did that's uh, analogous. He put on his computer in, okay, this is, this is in a meeting with the writing room. He puts on his computer a speech by Greta Thunberg against a background of rock music. It lasts a quarter of an hour. During the listening of this speech, he lets himself cry and comments <laughs> on his emotions. I'm crying, he said. I'm crying. It's real tears. Under her masks, uh, under her mask, uh, Vanessa explodes with laughter. It was the biggest laugh of my like life. Jake Gyllenhaal tells us, this is not a film about love, but a film about the love of nature. He declares that it's necessary to rewrite everything. All declarations of love must be turned into declarations of love for nature. So he was basically showing them environmentalist propaganda and crying in the writer's room with a Greta it's Thunberg such a it's playing. It's such a Hollywood thing to do. What to just be so disconnected from actual real world issues that this is what you do for work. This is insane. Jake Gyllenhaal did uh, this? We were talking about yeah, Jake this Gyllenhaal, Yeah, this right? is Jake Gyllenhaal. He, he played a video of Greta Thunberg's speech. In the background, there's a rock song playing, and he's crying while wearing a mask. Yeah. Seriously. He's, he's, we've lost him. I just, uh, COVID broke a lot of people. We've it lost sent a lot one. of people down the rabbit hole of, uh, of mental illness. Not mm -hmm. good. Um, the <laughs> there's a $20 one there from Tacti Platy. Oh, um... Let me see if it pulled up for me. Correction to the Star Trek Majelle Barrett voice. She died after Voyager was done, but before 2009 Trek with Chris Pine, her voice was used there posthumously as well as on Picard series as voice of the ship for both. Was she always just the voice of the ship or was she an nope. actress also? I, I don't know. know. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. So here's an example. This is not a, a real world death, but like in the show person of interest, the character of the machine, the AI is always done with like a random automated voice. It's like, it's kind of like when you, uh, you hear automated dial tone voice, right? Like, mm -hmm. a, or like, like Siri. Yeah. Well, not even that. Like it's uh, it was pre predating that stuff. Right. But after one of the characters dies, they actually, her voice becomes the voice of the machine in the show at the end of uh, at the end of it so every time a character dies their voice becomes no no just machine. just this one character just okay uh becomes the the voice of the of the machine of the ai gotcha yeah. this is uh from day two of the project the morning starts badly for a small problem of timing jake gyllenhaal farts <laughs> because he didn't know if the appointment was at 9 30 or 10 a.m the actors are taken to set on a beautiful sand beach on which the base will be built. Jake Gyllenhaal seems disappointed. He says that the nature isn't threatening enough. The mountains aren't high enough. What? He's got to be canceled. It's got to be like trying to get the thing canceled. I... Hey, wait. 
where, staging where you... a mental breakdown, like staging a psychotic episode in order to get out of a film project that you're a producer on is seems, wild. Yeah, it seems a lot more elaborate than necessary. I'm going with it as some kind of a It's like getting fired so that you can break. collect unemployment rather than <laughs> Wow. And then one of the, the writers said, I'd already been yelled at by directors, but never with this intensity. Uh, and then he said, I'm still convinced it's going to get better. So he's like, I can fix him. I can fix Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal. Jake talks a lot about the truth. He insists that his character is an old GI soldier accustomed to survival. And he sells us the idea that he will slap a fish. I want to know what poor fish did to him when he was younger. <laughs> what did that problem? fish ever do to you, <laughs> He's Jake. been waiting all these years to get his revenge. Honestly. And I'm just translating this through, like, broken English through Google Translate. But this is still crazy enough. He's like, make the mountains bigger! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he just wanted this to be some kind of environmentalist propaganda film when it was supposed to be a romance film. Hate it when that happens. Well, we're, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow, right? About that article from Film Threat where the person's like, it used to be like, what's this movie like? They're like, uh, what's the story of this movie? Now it's like, what can we teach people with this movie? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into that more. Yep. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.